Hello and welcome. Uh, today we're going to be talking about Varignon's theorem. So Varignon's theorem is dealing with moments, uh, and Varignon's theorem states that the moment exerted by the sum of two uh, concurrent forces will be equal to the sum of the moments exerted by each of the forces individually. Uh, so what this means, uh, if we've got two forces acting on this lever, uh, so the lever is going to rotate about point A here, uh, exerting the forces out at point B, uh, each of these forces, force 1 and force 2, are going to exert a moment. So I can find the moment that force 1 exerts about point A, and I can find the moment that force 2 exerts about point A. Um, I could also add these two forces together. So F1 plus F2 is equal to this F total, and the moment exerted by F total uh, is going to be equal to the moment exerted by F1 plus the moment exerted by F2. Uh, so with this, we can kind of go back and forth uh, between having uh, these two separate forces and finding the moments for it first, or I can kind of sum up all the forces and then find the moment then. Um, so in this way, uh, this is one useful application of Varignon's theorem, uh, being able to kind of sum up the forces beforehand. So actually the second and more common way we use Varignon's theorem uh, is we're going to start with a single force and actually be breaking it down. Um, so we've got some force here, uh, and we're taking the moment about this point here. Uh, so normally, we would need to find uh, this distance d from the line of action to the point we're taking the moment about, uh, and the moment is going to be f times d. Um, so here, this is going to become a, a fairly complex geometry problem to find this distance d. Because uh, we've got the angle uh, of this, um, we've got the angle of the force here, uh, and it doesn't line up in the x or y in either direction, so it becomes a little bit complicated. Um, actually, a second simpler way using Varignon's theorem uh, is going to be uh, <clears throat> rather than finding d to find that moment, we're going to break the force down. So we've got our force, we break it down into x and y components, and now each of these x the x component and the y component are each going to exert a moment about uh, my point over here. Uh, so for the x component, I've got this distance. This is my perpendicular distance here. It's the vertical distance. Uh, and so <clears throat> that's going to give me one moment. I'm going to call it moment of the x component. Uh, and then I've got the y component has this horizontal distance here. And it's going to exert a second moment. Uh, so I've got this second moment. And I know uh, that the sum of these two moments is going to be equal to the moment that this original force creates. So mx plus my is going to be equal to that original m uh, that was exerted by my original force. And so with this in mind, I can go ahead and uh, more easily solve this problem by breaking the force down into x and y components rather than solving directly uh, for that value d, which is the distance between the line of action of this force and the point I am taking the moment about. Uh, so with that, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again.